All right, guys. So in this video here, we're gonna briefly introduce the concept of definite integral. Um, so pretty much, we're gonna try to uh, briefly explain what is definite integral. Um, in the next video or in the next lesson, five point five, um, you know, we're gonna try to discuss how to evaluate definite integral. Up to this point, we learned how to uh, evaluate indefinite integral, um, and and now we're gonna look at definite integral. Um, so it says here that uh, definite integral is used to compute areas, okay, probabilities, average values of functions, future values of continuous income streams, and many other applications. So, um, in this in this video, I'm trying to I'm gonna attempt to trying to introduce definite integral through areas, and then when we get to chapter six, we we'll look at more of that, and that is probabilities. Uh, average value of functions and and future value of continuous income stream. Uh, this is uh, <clears throat> probably the most important one that we're gonna try and get to. And that's in chapter six. Um, so let's get started. So we look at this example. Suppose we have a vehicle. Suppose we have a car that travels fifty miles per hour for two hours. Okay. So for two hours, a vehicle travel at uh, fifty miles per hour. How far has a vehicle traveled? So in this question here is pretty simple. If a car travels fifty miles per hour. In one hour, the car will travel 50 miles, so that means in two hours, the car will travel 100 miles, okay? So we say the car, so we say the car travel 100 miles in two hours, right? Pretty simple. Now let's let's break this, this down a little further. Let's introduce some mathematical notation and, and see if we can look at this differently. Um, suppose, we want to define v of x, the velocity functions, or just the function just with the letter v, uh, of 50. Okay, so this is the constant function. So this is the function described the speed. So this is speed you know, of the car with respect to x hours, right? So it's a constant speed, right? Uh, so we can graph this function. So we can say that this function here can be graphed by Let's say it looks like this here, here's 50, so that's gonna go like that. Okay, so here's x, x means hours, right? So here's zero, one, two, right? So we can say that, so let's say, let's call this f of x, or oh, just okay, say v of x here. Um, actually, you know what, I wanna use f of x. Let's use f of x. f of x, f of x. Okay, so in two hours, you can see that um, the car has traveled 100 miles. How do we get 100 miles? We can get, we can take, uh, you know, we can say distance, so we can say distance, so use this go form of distance equal to rate times time, right? Rate is 50, time is um, two, so that's 100 miles, right? So we can do that, pretty simple. Or if we look in the graph, notice that the shaded area, the shaded area is 100. So if you if you look at that, this is actually one hundred miles. Um, you know you got you got um, um, the the width or the length here, whatever that is, is two times the height is fifty. So that's two times fifty, which is hundred. So uh, we can make this connection. We can say that this hundred mile, this distance here, is is the same as this area. What does this area represent? Is the area under the curve of the function f of x. Um, is the continuous functions, and and that the area under the curve from point zero to two is one hundred, which equivalent to the area, um, which equivalent to the distance traveled by the car. So we say we say that you know the right the shaded area under f of x or the curve is the same as as the distance travel by the car in two hours. Okay, all right. Okay. Now, um, if we look at this and said, okay, well, the antiderivative of f of x, so if we look at this in further, we say, okay, what if I wanna look at the antiderivative of f of x? Okay, so if I do that, that's equivalent to 50 dx, and that's just gonna be 50x plus c, okay? What if I want to evaluate, what if I want to, so this function here, we can think of this is the distant function, 
Okay, so if we if we plug in value of x, right? So if we say I want to evaluate this, you know, I want to evaluate this from between zero to two. That's just that's just fifty times two, you know, minus you know uh, fifty times zero. So that's gonna be a hundred. So it's the same thing. So there is a connection there that. We not only the area underneath the curve represent the distance traveled by the car, but if we find the antiderivative of that function, we can actually just kind of plug in the endpoints and subtract them so to get the, the distance there. Now here's where things get a little more complicated. Suppose the car did not travel at constant speed for two hours. Suppose so we say suppose now suppose the car did not travel a constant speed during the first two hours okay we don't know exactly what's going on but suppose the graph look like this suppose the graph that describes the speed of the car looks like this right so let's say here's x here's all right the speed of the car do like start you know doing this here Go up, down, up again, and then go that way. So suppose this is suppose this is f of x now, right? So suppose this is the f of x now. That's the speed of the car. The car, which is a little more realistic because in real life we don't we don't have constant speed for the whole duration. Maybe if you're on freeway, but even freeway, you, there's some some part of the freeway you speed up, you slow down. But imagine this this graph represents the speed of the car that you're driving. You know, on your trip, whatever, going Tahoe. Vegas, whatever. And and we're just gonna look at the first two hours. Okay. So let's say here is zero, one, two. One, two. So can we actually compute the exact distance travel? So now the question raises is, you know, what is the distant travel? Distant travel by the car in two hours. Certainly, we can't really determine that answer just because we don't know how fast the car is driving exactly. You know, it, it, it varies, depends where you are in the first two hours. But if we make this connection here, if we make this connection from here into there, we notice that the, the distance traveled by the car is sort of the same as or equivalent to the area under the curve, um, the, the function fx from 0 to 2. So if we do that, we, you know, we can actually sketch that in here. We can say that, okay, well, that distant travel by the car there is somewhat is somewhat right is somewhat you know equal to is somewhat equal to this area there so that's 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 the answer well now the question how are we gonna find that area that shape of this of, of the, the 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 shape region underneath the curve is not any shape that we know how to find an area of. It's not a rectangle. It's not a uh, triangle. It is not a uh, trapezoid. Maybe a little bit closer to trapezoid, but we don't really have a formula that calculate this exact area exact. But what we can do is, what we can do is we can actually estimate this. So we're going to attempt to say, let's say I want to divide this area. I want to divide this area, maybe just kind of four sections, okay, kind of like that, with equal width, and maybe each width is about a 0.5, right, okay, and then now I'm going to go ahead and, I'm going to go ahead and just estimate the total distance or the area by looking at these rectangles, okay, so maybe like that, and then up here, maybe like that, so we're looking at, we're looking at this here, okay, so that right there, so we say, let's say, you know, let's use n equal 4, divide, divide the interval 0 to 2 into 4 rectangles, right? Each width, each width here has, each width is equal to 0.5, you know, 0.5, and then, you know, calculate, calculate the areas of the rectangle. And then that that will be our estimated distance. Estimated distance. Okay. 
Well, if the width is 0.5, what will be what will be the height? Well, the height we can choose the height to be maybe we can choose the height to be the right end point there, so that'd be the first height, and this would be the second height, and then this would be the third height. This would be the fourth height. Now notice that some of this some of this rect rectangle here kind of you know kind of like overestimate like the first one that you have that extra area, and then the second one there you have that that little tiny spot, and then there as well. So it, it you know it depends how you look at where you use the height for the rectangle you may have overestimate or maybe underestimate so if we chose to use the the lower end of this rectangle where this is the height there that that will be a rectangle okay well that will means we have underestimate we we missing out this part there so there's no there's no really a good way to get the exact area but what we can do is okay what we can do is you know to get a better estimate of the area under the curve from 0 to 2 and remember this this area in the curve is is equal to so this area in the curve is the is the uh, distant travel this is the distant travel for the first two hours okay all right. So how do we get better estimate instead? Well, instead of four rectangle, what we can do is we can even make more rectangle. What if I want to divide this into eight rectangle? Maybe that. Notice that there we have smaller rectangle. Okay. All right. Smaller rectangle there. Okay. Well, if we do this, it seems like we get a little more closer to the actual area under the curve there, but that's still not. The exact area is it's a little bit best, better estimate than, than, than 4. So we can say, well, you know, divide more rectangles. Okay. Well, what if I want to even get a better estimate? Well, we can even divide more rectangles, drawing more rectangle. Okay. Okay, so the smaller rectangle are the skinnier rectangle, are, the more likely we get more precise underneath the curve and, and calculate the exact area of the curve. Okay, divide more rectangles, okay, to get a better estimate. Now, the question is how do we represent this mathematically? How do we write this so that way it makes sense? Okay, what we can do is we can let the width of rectangle, okay? So suppose, okay, so let me use different colors. Suppose, suppose, you know, we divide, 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 I can't even spell divide correctly here. Divide the interval zero to two into N rectangle, okay? All right, so what you say that, what you say that, um, uh, well now, and then we let, let this, this delta x of i, so this is going to be a weird notation, delta x of i will be the, the width equal to the width of, you know, the, of the x sub i minus x of i m minus 1. So it's kind of like right here in the middle there, right? So some sort of, you know, i is just an arbitrary c constant. So maybe just that, just tiny, you know, rectangle right there in the middle, right there. And then let that be the width uh, for, you know, for, for the interval x of i minus 1 to x of i, right? Whatever that is, okay? Uh, then the height, it will be f of x of i, whatever, whatever that turned out to be, right? You plug that into the function. Then the area, the area of that, the i -th rectangle, Okay, that area is gonna be is gonna be the uh, the height of that rectangle times the width of that rectangle. Okay, now how do we add? Then we add all of the n rectangle areas. Okay, to do that we use our uh, a notation. Uh, you may have seen this before um, in the stats class. Uh, we're going to add that using this sum notation. Okay, so we're going to say that's the sum from 
rectangle 1 to rectangle n, and that sum is going to be the sum of these area. So that's the that's the sum of that area. So this here, that's the area of the you know of a arbitrary rectangle, and we're going to add n of these. Okay, so that right there will be equal to the sum of all n rectangle. Okay, but even then, even then, guys, you know that that doesn't quite give us that doesn't quite give us the exact the exact you know, distance or area in the curve there. It just gives us a very much accurate estimate better than four rectangles, five rectangle. But check this out. We learned this concept already. So imagine if we divide those rectangle indefinitely, like infinitely many of those arbitrary, you know, tiny rectangles so that way it fit perfectly into the curve so that way we can calculate the exact area. Well, that concept there, we can introduce that by using the limit concept. So let the limit as n approaches infinity of this sum here. Okay. So if we do this, we we let that tend to infinity. That means we have created infinite many rectangles, tiny rectangles that fit perfectly underneath the, the curve from 0 to 2. And that right there will be equal to the exact area or distance that we're looking at travel by the car uh, from uh, exact area under f of x or the curve from 0 to 2. Okay, so there it is. This is called the Riemann sum. This is the, the Riemann sum here. This is called the limit of the Riemann sum. Um, well, where is the definite integral come from? What we can do from this point is when we get to the next lesson, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce the notation right now. So this here is shorthanded using this notation, the integral of that f of x dx from zero to two. So before we didn't have these limits, we didn't have these upper and lower limits here. Now we have that. So so the, the thing on the left is equal to the things on the right. This is the definite integral. So this this itself, this is equal to the definite integral so this is what the name of it okay so this definite integral is equal to the area the exact area under the function to under the fx from 0 to 2 okay in the next lesson okay we're going to show how to how to evaluate this and then formally formally you know define this using an arbitrary mathematical notation so hopefully that makes a little more sense i know there's a lot that we went over here but hopefully this makes sense in terms of 5.4 in the next video i'll go i'll go over the formal definition and i'll go over this example